Okay, so in order to do the item entry, you highlight the subfolder you've created, and you click on the add new items or blanks. And this will bring up a separate window, which has two main fittings in there. If you click on rectangular, it opens it up to a lot more fittings. The main ones you'll use are 120, which is an offset or reducer, 133, which is a squared around, not 140, that's a square to oval. We hardly ever, if, if ever, make those. We don't really make anything but square spine, square throat, elbows, which is 153. 170 is a T, we make those occasionally. 162 is a 45 degree elbow, which we make relatively frequently. 147 is an increased takeoff or a tap. That's the layman's term we use it in here in the shop. And then 107 is just cut duct. Now I've gone through previously and uh, entered in some examples of these fittings. So the first one we have is a square elbow and you enter in the dimensions for the openings. So this one happens to be 12 by 14 and 12 inch on the other side. The back doesn't change from this number. It maintains that dimension through, through the elbow. You leave it as Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. 24 gauge is just a common gauge we use. That can depend on the size of the elbow and you'll just have to use common sense for that. Once you're, you've entered in all the dimensions you need, you hit OK. That's piece number one. Piece number two is a piece of cut duct, and that's just 12 by 14. That's three foot long, three, uh, 36 inches long. You have to always enter it in based on inches, not feet. Whenever you can, you want to make it one piece wrap around for a cut duct. Same kind of connection, Pittsburgh, slip and drive, 24 gauge, hit OK. Transitions are a little bit trickier. I made this one a, a double offset transition. So that means that the dimensions leading into each other both change, and it's offsetting two, two ways. This is the, probably the hardest kind of transition you'll make. And when they draw it out, it can be a little bit confusing. But with time, you should be able to nail it down. So the front, which is this piece here, is coming up five. See, so front up five from the 12. So it means that the 10 is offsetting towards us where we're sitting five inches. The right hand side is offsetting to the right five inches. That's why it's minus five. It's bringing the 12 five inches past flat from the 14. And you want to make these two pieces as often as you can. The length is determined by the person sending you the drawings. 24 gauge to keep everything on one sheet of metal. Hit OK. An increased takeoff is probably the easiest fitting you enter in. You pretty much only have to edit this and this dimension to make the opening. And then leave it as Pittsburgh unless you're allowed to make it with Norlock, in which case you'll hit spot weld. Don't touch that. You can leave all this stuff as it is, unless there's something special, like maybe it has to be four inches long instead of six, but this stuff in here will automatically adjust to that. 24 gauge to keep it all in one piece of metal. Uh, inside tap in is a tap edge. That's what this is here. Don't really ever change that. And this can be changed to flanges and stuff as needed. And you hit OK. The last one I entered in was a squared around. Uh, pretty much standard dimensions. The only difference is the round dimension has to be one quarter of an inch smaller than the intended. So if they say they want 10 by 12 to 10 inch round, it'll actually 10, be 10 by 12 to 9.75, which is one quarter of an inch smaller. You can use these boxes here to offset it as needed. The collar pretty much is always three inches. You always leave it as a half inch lap to make the connection. The bottom can be changed from slip and drive to flanges or whatever else they might need. Uh, but the top should always be raw. And the gauge is 24 to keep it on the same piece of metal. And then finally, after you're done entering the fittings, you want to transfer it so that the, the computer understands that it is ready to be processed and can go in one piece of metal. So you click on your subfolder, RTU6 in this case, and there's this button here. It says process the job. You click on that. You want to make sure area is, is dotted or highlighted, however you want to call it. You hit OK. It'll go through a quick process. And then you can bring up the button directly next to process, which is sheet review. You bring that up. 
and it shows you all the fittings you've entered in on the sheet, and they should all look as you would visualize them in your head. So the elbow has two cheeks, a spine, and a throat. Squared around here, it's in two pieces, just like we asked it to be, with a collar. This is the cut piece of duct. It's four. It's the three notches, so you know it's uh, four-sided wrap around. And then the tap here, that's a tap edge, increasing for a takeoff, and then there's the fourth side. This looks good, so we'll hit save and exit. And then finally, you have to transfer this file over to the computer out in the shop in order to cut it out. So you bring up COM panel, click modify, download job, and the download number I happen to know is 526. I'll show you how to get the download number in a second. Just hit enter, hit save, it'll ask if you want to replace it, you just hit yes, and then you may minimize COM panel. Now in order to get the download number, you click on your project's name that's above, and it's download number 529 here. I think I just did 526, that's okay. Um, so this will basically sends the data you just entered in and the sheet with all the blanks and sends it over to the computer outside. That way, all you have to do out there is the standard process for bringing up the next sheet to cut out on the plasma cutter and you're good to go.